you've got asthma. And you don't know much about it. And you might even be a little scared. But hey, don't worry. That's why we're here. We'll tell you all about asthma. About how you can live with it and do all of the normal things other kids do. You thought kids with asthma had to stay home from school a lot? And not participate in sports? And not do things with their friends? No way. Asthma's tough, but you don't have to let it get you down. You can take control of your asthma. Asthma is a kind of lung disease, but it's nothing to be scared of so long as you get the correct kind of treatment and follow your doctor's instructions. Asthma is not contagious. I mean, you didn't catch it from somebody else. You can't pass it on to anybody. So there's no reason for people around you to be afraid. Millions of people in the United States have asthma, and almost five million of those people are under age 18. So if you're a kid with asthma, you're not alone. You probably already have friends with asthma and don't even know it. There's no cure for asthma. There's no medicine that will make it go away forever. But you can get your asthma under control. Before we tell you how to do that, let's take a look at just what asthma does to you. When you breathe, you take air in through your nose or mouth and pull the air deep down into your lungs. When your lungs have used up the oxygen in the air, you blow out the air again. But people with asthma sometimes have asthma attacks. When you have an asthma attack, the muscles around your lungs squeeze tight, the air tubes inside your lungs swell up, and the air tubes get clogged with mucus, kind of like the stuff in your nose when you have a bad cold. The tightness, the swelling, the mucus, all these things make it really hard to breathe. If you've ever had an asthma attack, you know just how scary it can be. You probably worry about having another one. But there are ways to keep from having an asthma attack. And even if you do have an asthma attack, there are ways to keep from feeling so bad. Let's look at how you can avoid having your asthma symptoms in the first place. Your doctor will ask you to find your asthma triggers. Asthma triggers are things that cause your asthma symptoms. Some of the most common asthma triggers are anything you're allergic to, like dust, dog or cat fur, pollen, things that irritate your lungs, like aerosol sprays or cigarette smoke, colds and infections, exercising too hard without resting, changes in the weather, and strong emotions. Whatever your asthma triggers are, you can find ways to avoid them. Some of the changes you might have to make might be difficult for you at first, but not nearly as difficult as having an asthma attack. Your doctor may prescribe medicine for you to take each day. This medicine, called an anti-inflammatory, keeps the air tubes in your lungs open so you won't have so many asthma attacks. When it comes to taking medicine, it's always important to take the correct amount and take it at the correct times. Not taking the right amount of medicine or taking medicine at the wrong times can be dangerous. Also, never stop taking your medicine just because you're feeling better. Remember, it's the medicine that's helping you keep your asthma under control. Never stop taking medicine unless your doctor tells you to. So, know the name of your medicine. Know how much to take. Know when to take it. And you'll be on your way to controlling your asthma. Now you've learned about avoiding your asthma triggers. And you've learned about taking your asthma medicine. But there's even another way you can keep from having an asthma attack. And that's by using your peak flow meter. A peak flow meter measures how well you can push air out of your lungs. Every morning when you wake up, and every night before you go to bed, blow air through your peak flow meter. If the meter shows that you're in the green zone, that means everything is okay. The air tubes in your lungs are open and doing well. If the meter is in the yellow zone, that means caution. Your lungs aren't pushing air out like they should. This might mean you're about to have an asthma attack. You should tell a parent or family member what's happening. You should try to rest and relax. And, depending on your doctor's instructions, you might need to take some medicine. If your peak flow meter reading is in the red zone, you need to get help right away. The red zone tells you that your air tubes aren't working very well. Every family should know what to do when peak flow meter readings are in the red zone. The correct medicine, the doctor's phone number, and directions to the nearest emergency room should be close by. Avoiding your asthma triggers. taking your medicine and using your peak flow meter. We've learned how to keep asthma attacks from happening so often, but what do you do if you have one anyway? 
there are five things you should remember. First, know your warning signs. If you feel sick, if you feel a tightness in your chest, if you hear that wheezing sound when you breathe, these could be signs that an asthma attack is starting. The sooner you recognize these signs, the better you can control your asthma. Tell someone who can help you. If you're at home, tell a parent. If you're at school, tell a teacher or a coach. Just like at home, have a copy of your emergency plan at school. Your teacher or the school nurse should have instructions about your medicine and your doctor's phone number. Take your asthma medicine. We've already told you about anti-inflammatories, the medicine you take every day to control asthma. For asthma attacks, you will probably use another kind of medicine called a bronchodilator. Using an inhaler, you breathe this medicine deep into your lungs. The medicine will relax the muscles that are tightening around your air tubes. In just a few minutes, it will be easy to breathe again. Rest, relax, and try to stay calm. Getting scared can actually make your asthma attack worse. On the other hand, staying calm can sometimes help stop the attack before it starts. Call your doctor, or get your parent to, if you are not improving. So, know the five steps. Know your warning signs, tell an adult, take your medicine, rest, relax, and stay calm. Call your doctor if you are not improving. To make sure the bronchodilator medicine reaches your lungs, you need to use your inhaler the right way. Follow these steps. Remove the cap and hold the inhaler upright. Shake the inhaler. Tilt your head back a little, then blow out as much air as you can. Then hold the inhaler one to two inches from your open mouth or close your mouth around the inhaler's mouthpiece as directed by your doctor. While breathing in, press down and release a puff of medicine. Breathe it in for five to 10 seconds. Try to hold your breath for 10 seconds so that the medicine can reach deep down into your lungs. If your doctor has told you to take more than one puff of medicine, wait one minute between puffs. You might use a spacer with your inhaler. After you insert the inhaler into the spacer, shake it. When you press down to release the medicine, the puff goes into the spacer. Use one puff at a time. Keep your lips closed around the spacer, then take a deep breath. Hold it for 10 seconds, then exhale. Using a spacer helps get more of the medicine deeper into your lungs, opening up those air tubes so you can breathe better. This is one type of inhaler commonly used. Other types are available that your doctor may suggest for you. Living with asthma is complicated, but we know you can do it. Ask your parents to help you find your asthma triggers and to help you learn more about your treatment. Listen closely to your doctor and always follow the doctor's instructions. Remember, you need to take control of your asthma. If you don't, you might miss a lot of school and get behind in your work. Not be able to go outside and play. Not be able to do things with your friends. You might always worry about when your next asthma attack will happen. Worst of all, when you don't have your asthma under control, you feel terrible. But if you take control of your asthma, you can go to school like other kids, play most sports, and live a normal, healthy, happy life. Millions of kids like you are living with asthma, and they're doing the same things and living the same dreams as other kids. Olympic gold medalist Jackie Joyner Kersey shouldn't let childhood asthma slow her down. Neither did NBA star Dominique Wilkins. If you've got asthma, you're not alone. Learn more about it, get the help you need, and follow your treatment plan. If you have any questions, ask your doctor. Asthma. Take control. Take control.